So, a good day to everyone. Um, last lecture discussion, I've talked about the reproductive physiology of the uh, boar and the sow. So, I've talked about the estro cycle of the sow. I've talked about uh, the how the hypothalamus um, secret the, the hormones that will influence the uh, reproduction of the of both the boar and the sow, as well as I talk about the puberty. So, with that, uh, we'll, we will go now to another chapter wherein we will talk about herd management. So, we will talk about the management on uh, the different categories of uh, on the sow or on the swine, like the um, management on the pregnant and Pregnant sow and guild, management of a uh, farrowing sow, management of uh, sow after giving birth, uh, management of piglets, that, that uh, sort of stuff. So uh, for this uh, video lecture on herd management, I will be focusing on the management of pregnant sow and guilds. So when we say pregnant, hindi pa nanganganak ah. So just stating pa lang. So... With that, uh, yung management of pregnant sow and gills uh, can be uh, parang categorized into yung gestation. So, ano yung mga management, mga feeding management, mga housing management na kailangan mong gawin uh, pag uh, yung uh, um, sow is uh, undergoing gestation. Then, ano naman yung mga management na gagawin mo for farrowing pag yung mga nanganganak na. And then, ano naman yung mga management, feeding management na gagawin mo after nanganak yung baboy. So, those are yung mga uh, topics that we will um, discuss. So, first is on the management during a gestation. So, I will be talking uh, solely on the housing management and the feeding management. So, um, in gestation, in mammals, uh, ito yung uh, time between yung conception and birth. Meaning, ito yung time na uh, from yung nag-mate yung boar at saka sow uh, until uh, the time na manganak yung sow. So, uh, in gestation, during gestation, this is where yung embryo or yung fetus is developing in the uterus. So, pag ganun, pag developing yung fetus or uterus, uh, a fetus or embryo in the uterus, kailangan nung sow, kailangan nung pregnant guilt or sow ng uh, special nutrition, special care, special management. Kasi nga, may dinadala siyang... Uh, of spring, may dinadala siyang fetus. So, first, we're going to talk about the housing management. So, in housing management, uh, it covers yung environment ng uh, pregnant sow on guild. Kasi, sa housing management, it will uh, parang give you, kung proper yung housing management mo, it will give you yung uh, suitable environment. It will give the pregnant sow or gill the suitable environment. So, uh, kailangan isaalang-alang isa yung environment ng animal within that uh, housing, within that, within, within that cage, parang ganun. So, uh, the suggested optimum range of air temperature for gestating gill and sow is around 15.56 to 20 degrees Celsius. So, ganun dapat kalamig for gestating uh, gills and sow. Pero, um, parang hindi ito yung parang nasusunod, hindi ito yung uh, common na temperature for mga ordinary farms. So, this 15 to 56, uh, 15.56 to 20 degrees Celsius, it could achieve if you're uh, housing, if you could invest in a uh, good ventilation, uh, proper uh, mga cooling system, proper equipments on uh, maintaining yung temperature. 
So, doon sa mga ordinary farms, um, hindi na achieve to. So, most probably, wala pang ventilation. Most probably, wala pang calling system. So, yung nangyayari, uh, mas mababa yung productivity ng reproductive capacity ng mga pregnant sow and yield. So, yung talagang optimum, yung pinakamagandang temperature uh, na dapat na i-achieve is around 15.56 to 20 degrees Celsius. So, however, yung effectivity ng temperature experienced by yung gestating sows and yields is a function of may mga factors na kailangan daw isa alang-alang. Yun yung air temperature, relative humidity, air speed, wall and ceiling temperature, floor characteristics, body weight, feed intake, handling, and number of pigs housed together. So, yun yung mga factor. So, uh, na kailangan isa alang-alang on uh, when we are uh, managing yung temperature doon sa um, housing ng mga gestating pigs. So, uh, Animal behavior should also be observed as an indication of thermal comfort. So, um, if wala ka talaga yung mga ganun, mga equipment, mga um, ventilation, uh, you could observe yung mga saws. You could observe them if they are experiencing too much heat, if they are experiencing heat stress. So, uh, yung mga animals that are too hot will pan. When we say pant, yung yung parang humihingal and they lay on their side. So, yun yung uh, mga behavior na dapat tignan ng isang farm worker, farm manager, uh, which indicates na medyo naiinitan na yung gestating na sow or gill. Pag humihingal, nagpapan, tapos yung paglay niya is on their side, uh, that indicates that uh, medyo mataas yung temperature. So, ma uh, pwede rin na lethargic yung animal. So, when we say lethargic, nang nangihina, hindi makatayo. So, those are some behaviors that uh, needed to be uh, observed pag naiinitan masyado yung animal. Pag naman when they are too cold, uh, they will huddle to the and tend to lay on their stomach with their uh, feet underneath them. So, parang nagkukukot. So, they will huddle together para mas mainit. So, those are like the behavior that you need to consider. So, the housing for gestating sow and guilt should be designed in such a way that it prevents heat, heat stress. So, especially here in the Philippines. So, kailangan isa alang-alang yung uh, sa housing, madami kang dapat na isa alang-alang na factors. Madami ka dapat na mga parang equipment or facility na dapat mong kaila, uh, i-install uh, in order to achieve yung uh, optimum temperature na kailangan ng mga, ng mga saw at para ma-prevent yung heat stress. So, uh, on the first 30 days and last 2 weeks of gestation, are the periods when heat stress can have the most critical detrimental effect on litter size and livability. So, dun daw sa pinakaunang month at saka dun sa last two weeks na pag gestate ng animal, bago siya manganak, yun yung parang uh, most susceptible yung animal. Uh, sa temperature, most susceptible sila sa heat stress. So, when we say heat stress kasi, uh, it induces some physiological um, changes in the animal. So, pwede pag heat stress kasi, um, pwede na nare-reduce yung feed intake niya. Which is, um, kumbaga, a problem since pag nare-reduce yung feed intake, then hindi siya makakakuha ng optimum uh, nutrition na kailangan niya. So, most probably, under, nutri uh, under nut uh, nutrition yung kalalabasan, so hindi na niya mag-provide yung um, fetus or yung embryo ng mga kailangan na nutrients para lumaki. So, this will result to a lower litter size, uh, difficulty in um, 
following mga ganun. So, uh, laging tatandaan yung first month at saka yung last two weeks, yung uh, pinaka-susceptible, yung um, sow or guilt to heat stress, which can be detrimental dun sa liter size at saka yung livability ng mga uh, piglets. So, yung pregnant uh, sow will start experiencing heat stress when the air temperature is greater than 28.8 degrees Celsius. So, yun. We know that the optimum temperature is around 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. That's the optimum, optimum temperature for sow and guild. Uh, pero, you have yung allowance naman. As long as hindi tataas sa 28.8 degrees Celsius. Pag 28.8 degrees Celsius na, uh, medyo mainit na talaga, then, uh, the pregnant sow can experience heat stress. So, uh, laging tatandaan na itong mga sow na to, itong mga pigs na to, uh, they are susceptible to heat stress. Because, uh, pigs do not sweat very efficiently. Hindi sila katulad ng ibang mammals, hindi sila katulad ng ibang animals that they have, uh, that they can sweat properly that they can sweat efficiently that they can uh, undergo the process of yung tinatawag na evaporative uh, cooling na tinatawag. Sa baboy kasi medyo inefficient yung evaporative cooling na tinatawag nila. Kung saan nagsusweat sila and then yung, uh, yung sweat na yon it will cool down yung uh, mga blood vessels dun sa skin. Dun, mga blood vessels mga nanan dun sa surface na nandun sa near the skin pag nag sweat kasi yung animal it will cool down this blood vessel so uh, yung kalalabasan makakapagproduce or magre-result into a cooler blood dun yung blood vessel which will circulate on the body system of the animal which cools them down kasi nga uh, because of the sweat Pero kasi itong mga pig na to, they are not efficient when it comes to sweating. Kaya kailangan talaga na may proper ventilation ka, proper cooling system para ma-avoid yung heat stress na tinatawag. So, the components that is considered uh, to cool down the gestating sow includes yung shade. So, given na yan kasi nasa pag... Uh, nagpapatayo ka ng housing for the uh, swine in general, dapat may roof. So, shade, uh, air movement. So, yun. Uh, ito yung parang kulang sa most of the uh, parang normal farms. Air movement. Lalong-lalo na if enclosed yung ano, yung uh, housing. Kailangan talaga ng air movement. Kailangan ng proper ventilation. And then, you have also evaporative cooling na tinatawag. So, yung most reliable method uh, for moving yung air movement na tinatawag is used by the mechanical ventilation, the use of fans. Uh, mas maganda yung mechanical ventilation yung paggamit mo ng fans kaysa sa aasa ka na lang dun sa natural ventilation. So, that's for, uh, that's for that. So, one method of cooling the air that enters a building is the evaporative fat cooling system. So, hindi ito common. Hindi ito common sa Pilipinas, I think. Uh, most probably sa mga big farms lang. Mga big uh, pork producer na farms lang. Pero, uh, this could help yung maintain a lower, a cooler temperature. So, kaya ang ginagawa nito, yung uh, incoming air, magpapas dito sa mga butas-butas dito. Kasi ito, moist pad to. Ah, basa. And, ang gagawin niya, yung air, pag nagpas dito sa moist pad, the heat in the air will evaporate. It will evaporate moisture into the air. So, yun yung ginagawa ng evaporative cooling system. So, Yung problema lang dito sa evaporative cooling system, it is dependent on the relative humidity of the outside air. Kung masyado namang mababa, walang silbi. 
kasi nga wala namang moisture. So, it is dependent on re relative humidity. So, uh, yung effectiveness nitong cooling system, uh, it works best in yung mga hot dry climates. Itong uh, uh, evaporative pad cooling system na tinatawag. So, to help control the ambient temperature within a gestation uh, facility, the building has to be adequately insulated. So, uh, pag um, wala ka nung evaporative cooling system, then kailangan mo talaga, talaga na um, there's proper uh, insulation, lalong-lalo na sa roof mo. So, remember that uh, yung insulation is not only used to keep heat in the building but it is also used to keep heat out during weather. So, hindi lang siya yung ini-insulate niya yung uh, temperature dito sa loob ng building, kundi blinablock niya. Hindi niya pinapayagang makapasok. Yung insulation, hindi niya pinapayagang makapasok. Yung uh, hot temperature dun sa outside uh, climate or outside environment. So, uh, you need a uh, better cooling system, evaporative cooling system. You also need to have uh, bet, um, efficient insulators. Then, insulation is very important even in naturally ventilated facilities in warm climates because it reduces the temperature of the underside of the roof. So, particularly talaga dito sa roof, dapat may insulation ka kasi pag direkta, wala kang insulation, uh, iinit yung roof mo. Pag iinit yung roof mo, most probably maa-affect lahat to. Mag-increase yung temperature inside yung sa um, housing mo. So, kailangan talaga ng insulation. Then, after insulation, you also need to consider yung ventilation. Yung, there are many versions of yung ventilation system. But, uh, uh, yung factor na kailangan is yung uh, sa alang-alang doon sa ventilation is uh, the amount of ventilation air that is moved uh, and distributed doon sa, sa housing. So, most facilities, I think naman, yung mga magagandang farm, have funds placed in yung sa mga different uh, locations doon sa housing or around the building and yun, to give proper ventilation. So, Another or one type of ventilation is what we call as mechanical ventilation. So, uh, kung mechanical ventilation, it uses fan to provide all of the ventilation. Mechanical nga. Uses uh, equipment, uses devices, particularly fan, to provide all the ventilation. Yung fan na mismo yung uh, magsis, maggagawa, magsisirculate. Siya, siya yung magsisirculate ng air outside and uh, inside the uh, housing. So, uh, the advantage of the system is that it provides a highly controlled method of ventilation. So, kasi uh, most probably you have control, you have switches doon sa fan mo. So, you can control how much air can uh, be circulated, you can control the speed of the fan how much airflow that you can uh, that you will give so ganun so yun yung advantage may control ka dun sa hangin then another type of uh, mechanical ventilation you have yung tunnel ventilation na tinatawag which creates an artificial wind to help cool down south during uh, summer months so ganito ganito dito sa picture may mga parang uh, um, tunnel na may fans which will parang create artificial wind inside yung sa um, building, yung sa housing ng uh, South and Gills. So, this system will use itong mga large fans on one end of the building dito sa, dito, sa part na to and a ventilation curtain on the opposite end wall. So, Fans are uh, parang may control sila, may thermostatic control itong mga fans na to para ma-increase yung speed 
as the temperature increases. So, parang may detection sila. May detector yung mga ganitong uri ng tunnel ventilation. Kung saan pag nag-increase yung um, outside heat or nag-increase yung temperature, mag-increase rin yung wind speed. So, that. So, I think one of the, yun nga, talagang may advantage ka pag uh, may ventilation ka, lalong-lalo na pag mechanical ventilation. You can uh, control, you can efficiently uh, control, you can lower talaga yung temperature inside the um, housing. Pero yung I think one of the disadvantages is that it is costly. Since you're talking about equipments, you're talking about fans that are as, uh, ganitong kalalaking fans. So, and then yung labor to install this talagang uh, medyo expensive. So, uh, I think yung mga makaka-afford ay yung mga larger farms, yung mga bigger uh, big farms itong mga uh, mechanical ventilation na tinatawag. Pag wala naman, then you can use natural ventilation. So, when we say natural ventilation, uh, ventilation system that uses wind and thermal buoyancy to exchange air. So, meaning lang nito, it is, it is natural. So, uh, wala kang, wala kang install na fan, wala kang uh, gagawin na kahit ano, wala kang, um, hindi ka bibili ng mga fans, hindi ka mag-install ng mga wind tunnel na tinatawag, uh, purely natural lang. Aasa ka dun sa circulation ng uh, air, natural air papunta doon sa ano mo doon sa housing so uh, sa natural and uh, ventilation there is modified environment building step large ventilation openings on the side walls and chimney or slat openings through the roof ridge so just like here you have chim chimney mga openings on the side walls mga ganun uh, this is done talaga, pag gusto mo na natural ventilation lang, kung uh, di mo afford yung mga mechanical ventilation. Itong natural ventilation kasi, um, you, so you are supposed to have itong mga openings na to. Kailangan itong mga openings na to para doon papasok yung hangin. Wala, hindi mo naman masasabing ventilation kung walang uh, Kung walang papasok na hangin, kung walang lalabas na hangin, kung walang papasok na hangin, then uh, it is not properly ventilated yung housing. So, kailangan talaga na may mga opening. So, ganito yung ginagawa nila. Nilalagyan nila ng chimney kung saan papasok yung air. Nilalagyan nila ng mga uh, openings dito sa side walls. So, yun. Yung drawback lang nito, pag uh, medyo walang air, uh, walang air current, walang air movement, walang wind. Uh, during hot weather, uh, talagang medyo uh, mainit pa rin. And with that, talagang dependent yung mga, yung ventilation, yung natural ventilation dun sa wind para makapasok dito sa, um, dito sa housing. So that's for natural ventilation. Then, we also have proper lighting. So, uh, I think proper light, when we say proper lighting, uh, talaga yung maapektuhan nito is more on yung mga poultry. Kasi may, maraming study on it na yung lighting will uh, affect. Pero sa gestating sow and guild, uh, more on the ano na sa uh, convenience nung nag-aalaga na. So, proper lighting is one of the essential factors that influences the quality of the working environment in a gestating facility. So, yung adequate lighting, it is, is, it is needed para ma-maximize yung worker safety, yung comfort, at saka yung efficiency nila. Kasi, uh, common sense, if masyadong madilim, then uh, mahi mahihirapan kang... Um, gumawa, mahihirapan kang mag-work inside the building. So, but, all in all, kailangan pa rin ng proper lighting. 
So the amount of illumination needed depends on the task performed in the breathing gestation facility. So kailangan sufficient yung uh, lighting mo. Then, uh, another thing that they do is that they combine yung mga gills and sow, yung mga namit na na gills and sow, in individual crates or gestating crates tulad nito. So dito lang sila. So this uh, practice kasi will favor higher conception rate and farrowing rates, rates and larger litter size. So yan, um, yung concept nito hindi gagalaw masyado yung baboy. Pag hindi siya gagalaw masyado, it will not expend energy on parang yung mga sa muscle activity. Hindi siya nag-expend uh, ng mga uh, uh, ng energy dun sa mga hindi naman makabuluhan na mga tas hindi naman yung mga hindi naman talaga kailangan so minimum muscle activity lang yung ginagawa so yung mga energy yung mga energy na, na kinakain yung mga na nanggaling sa feed almost all of it will mapupunta dun sa uh, development dun sa paglaki nung no? uh, ng uh, fetus doon sa sa gestating sow or, or guilt. So, pag ganun, uh, this will favor talaga yung uh, mas maganda yung conception rate niya at saka yung mas malaki yung mga liter size. So, yan yung ginagawa. They put it on a gestating crates. So, I also included this since part naman siya Uh, ng gestation, although uh, pupunta na doon sa farrowing, we need to uh, thoroughly clean the sows with soap and water before transferring them to farrowing crates. So yun, kailangan na uh, you clean yung uh, sow bago mo i-transfer doon sa uh, crates kung saan siya manganak. So, the desired out uh, So here we have na pala yung sa feeding management. So doon yung housing management. Yun yung mga house uh, factors that you need to con consider in uh, sa housing management. Nang sows and kids. So uh, one important thing that you need to consider is yung temperature talaga. Kasi lalong-lalo uh, na at susceptible yung mga sows and kids doon sa um, increased temperature. Then you also need to consider yung ventilation, uh, the sort, that sort of stuff. Then you also need to consider yung lighting for the workers. So mga ganun yung kailangan for housing management. Then for feeding management naman, uh, yung desired outcome for a successful gestation feeding program are dapat malaki, vigorous yung liter of pigs at farrowing. So dapat healthy meaning dapat healthy yung mga pigs na lalabas na ia na during farrowing dapat healthy mga uh, piglets then a healthy sow equipped to produce large quantities of milk for the suckling litter so kailangan na rin na healthy yung sow mo kasi para makapag-produce siya ng uh, large amount of milk para naman may masak or may uh, mainom yung mga piglets mo. So, da, yan yung objective ng isang feeding program, ng isang magandang feeding management. Uh, malalakas na piglets, healthy na piglets, and then healthy rin na uh, lactating sow. Yun yung uh, desire niya. So, uh, yung feeding strategy nila for this sort of Uh, pag sa gestating sow and gill, uh, most producers use a pace feeding feeding program na tinatawag. So, ano nga ba itong uh, pace feeding program na tinatawag? So, yung pace feeding, uh, yung sow are fed maintenance level of feed in the early portion of gestation. So, I hope uh, on your feeds and feeding, uh, natagal nyo yung uh, maintenance level na tinatawag. So, when we say maintenance, yung uh, ipapakain mo lang, yung ibibigay mo lang na nutrients 
ay yung kailangan ng pig for para mabuhay para makakapag-function yung mga metabolic processes niya ng maayos. Yun yung maintenance level lang. Kailangan lang na um, mabuhay yung pig. So, hindi ka na magbibigay ng um, extra nutrients for yung sa growth, mga ganun. This is from day 0 to 30. Dapat uh, yung ipapakain mo lang dun sa sow or sa pregnant sow or gill is maintenance level lang. So, dito kasi, kasi maintenance lang level lang ipapakain mo because yung nutrients na kailangan ng mga developing fetuses, ng mga developing piglets, uh, are extremely small. So, hindi pa sila yung uh, kailangan talaga ng nutrients. Hindi pa kailangan ng mga piglets na doon sa um, chan sa loob ng uh, sa loob ng pregnant sow and gill ng madaming nutrients. So, small amount lang. So, kailangan na uh, maintenance level lang yung ipakain mo. So, this is para makatipid naman sa feed. Parang ganun. So, and then, in addition to that, yung high level of feeding kasi in this early, in this early phase, dito sa day 0 to 30, uh, can have detrimental effect dun sa embryo ko. Dun sa embryo survival. So, parang may bad effect yung masyado kang pinapakain, masyado kang binibigay dun sa survival ng embryo. Then, during mid gestation, that is from day 30 na to uh, day 75, feed intake is generally also keep near main maintenance level lamang. So, dito, maintenance level pa lang, but it can be altered. Uh, uh, number one reason, kung gusto mong magpakain ng mas marami, mas higher than the maintenance level, uh, para you have uh, makagain ng body weight, uh, para maganda yung body condition. Kung hindi maganda, nakikita mo na hindi maganda yung body condition ng sow, then itong during mid gestation, uh, pwede kang magdagdag ng nutrients, pwede kang magdagdag dun sa pinapakain mo, pwede kang magdagdag higher than yung maintenance level para uh, makagain weight yung animal na hindi maganda yung body condition. Then, Pwede rin naman na you need to reduce yung body condition, yung body weight ng animal. So, during mid-gestation, pag nakita mong medyo mataba, medyo overweight yung baboy, which is which can be uh, a factor sa panganganak, baka mahirapan, then you can feed him lesser than yung maintenance level para uh, manumbalik or it will go to a normal um, body weight or it can go to a normal body condition. So, yun. That's for during mid-gestation. And then, uh, during yung last 3 to 4 weeks of gestation, feed intake should be increased. Dito ka na mag increase 3 to 4 weeks during gestation. So, uh, dito kasi, yung fetal growth or yung piglet, uh, yung fetal growth rate will, uh, after yung 75 days of pregnancy, it will increase dramatically, mag increase siya ng bigla-bigla compared dun sa early at saka mid-gestation. Para masatisfy yung uh, increase in nutrient demand ng mga sanggol, yung mga piglet, you should also intake, uh, increase yung feed intake ng animal. So, that's for pace feeding. Then, uh, sow should be flushed to promote ovulation and increase number of ovary this from the ovary. So, this is um, sa ano, dito sa parang early, dun sa nag-mate pa lang yung animal. So, you need to flush it to promote ovulation and increase number of ovary this from the ovary. So, you need, pag flushing kasi na tinatawag, you give high energy diet. So, that's for that. And then, um, provide yung pregnant sow and gills with additional nutrients to allow about 25 kg maternal weight gain and 20 kg of maternal uh, products. So, kailangan isa alang alang na 
pag sa uh, pregnant sa wen gil um, dapat maggain sila or maggain sila ng 25 kg na weight gain and then sa maternal products na i-produce niya during yung gestation niya nasa 20 kg rin so kailangan talaga na uh, you give them additional nutrients mas maganda na mas maganda na uh, high quality ng feeds para ma supply mo talaga yung uh, additional nutrients na kailangan ng mga sows and kids. So, this is done for normal reproduction. Kailangan to para normal yung delivery, walang mas walang um, walang magiging problema doon sa mga anak para at para hindi healthy siya bago siya manganak. So, yun. Then, Another one is that you should limit energy intake for sow and kid. Dapat ilimit natin yung uh, energy intake. Then, bulky diets or rations should be fed a few days before farrowing. So, itong pag nasa gestation period pa lamang siya, hindi pa siya yung mga nganak, uh, dapat ilimit natin yung energy intake. Pero, Uh, when a few days before yung expected farrowing, you could give them uh, a bulky diets like rice or wheat, wheat bran, mga copra meal, uh, in order to prevent constipation during sa panganganak. And then on the farrowing day, do not feed the sow on farrowing day. So those are the feeding management na kailangan na isaalang-alang. I guess dun sa specific ng mga uh, mga feeds specific na mga nutrient requirement for gestating feed and for gestating sows and gills hindi ko na itatakel since I hope uh, na, na discuss na ito or kung hindi uh, pwede nyong balikan uh, or hindi kung hindi nyo maalala pwede nyong balikan yung mga lectures yung in feeding management yung sa animal nutrition nung third year kayo and you could also search on the internet but basically those are like the things that you need to consider in feeding ma uh, sa feeding ng gesta gestating sow and kill so with that that ends my video lecture for this uh, topic on during gestation lang muna so iba pa rin yung mga feeding management housing management for farrowing then after farrowing so This is only for gestating, uh, feeding management for gestation. So, I think that's all for today. Uh, thank you for listening. And then please, if um, you have any question, that, that, uh, just feel free to message me. And uh, pag gusto nyo i-review ng i-review nyo to since uh, video lecture naman. So, yun. Thank you for listening and have a good day.